In today's video, you are not burning as many calories as you think you are. What's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and I got a great question on my Instagram direct message from someone who's, hey, just trying to lose some body fat. Who knew? And Coach Paul is here for you. Guys, losing body fat is a pretty simple process, okay? We've all heard, eat less and move more. Although that's probably my least favorite advice, if you break it down in essence, creating a caloric deficit comes down to adjusting your energy intake and increasing your energy expenditure to ensure that you are in fact breaking down body fat for fuel as opposed to storing more body fat, okay? Now, those processes are happening all the time. They are never off or on. They are always on. You're always storing fat and burning body fat. So what happens over the course of a 24 hour a window or a week, that net exchange is what's gonna determine if we're losing body fat. So let me read the question to you and I'm gonna address exactly why you are not burning as many calories as you think you are. My weight has been steady at 180 pounds. I'm 5'10". I work out from a home gym four to five days a week. I burn 800 calories per day on my Apple Watch. I eat 2000 calories a day. I do 10,000 steps a day. I've been averaging 13,000 this year. And according to my calculators, I'm at a deficit of 600 calories, but my weight has been the same. Why am I not losing fat at 200 protein, 55 fat, and 180 carbs? All of those numbers you gave me are great. All the data that we get is just data. However, as a fat loss coach, I can tell you, I have never asked anyone what their Apple Watch says, okay? How do I determine if someone is losing body fat? There's a few things that we're gonna talk about. The scale is obviously the thing that most of us can easily use. We can get on the scale and go, okay, the number is lower, maybe I'm losing body fat. However, our bodies are mostly water and it's very easy to manipulate that water intake. In fact, sometimes just going on a low carb diet for a couple of days, you'll notice the scale drops. You might not have lost any body fat, okay? What you've essentially done is dehydrate the cells, particularly some of the muscle cells in your body giving your body perhaps a softer, smaller look, reducing your performance outside in sports or the gym, but you've got the number on the scale to go down and thus you might think that you're actually in a fat loss phase or a caloric deficit. This is where we can start to understand what's actually happening with you when we do these three things. Three things you need to know to know if you're in a fat loss phase. Yes, you can check the scale. Over a longer period of time, I like to see the average weight trending down, however, there may be periods where the scale pops up and there may be periods where the scale drops rapidly, but neither of those is going to be a true representation. True fat loss has a limiting phase. Yes, you have to be able to burn the fat cells off. Although the fat cells are always there, you can take the adipose out of them, burn it for fuel, and it basically nullifies that fat cell. That takes time. That's a rate limiting step. You're not going to lose seven pounds of body fat in a day. Likewise, you're not going to gain seven pounds of body fat in a day, although the scale can easily fluctuate more or less than that, just based on things like, are you sick? Did you take in a bunch of sodium? Are you near your cycle? Did you get less sleep? Are you very sore? Did something dietarily happen to you, right? Our bodies are water storage and water loss machines. And that's really what the scale most accurately reflects. Now, what I like to do with my athletes that are checking in with me is make sure that our digestion is very consistent. Our training is consistent. The time of day that we check the scale is consistent. I check for wellness scores, things like sleep and stress. And if those things are consistent and I see that the scale isn't moving, I'll move on to my next thing, measurements. That's right. There is no waist muscle. I love checking the waist for fat loss on men, on women, that lower back, that lower abdomen. When that number starts to come in, that is a great indicator of fat loss. Are you tracking that? If you're not actually tracking it with a cheap little measuring device that you can get on Amazon for a couple bucks, you can simply start to notice that your pants are a little bit looser. Your clothes are a little bit looser. We tend to wear the same clothes for a long period of time. Men, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I've had some clothes for 15, 20 years at this point. It's kind of embarrassing, but I still love them. But I notice when they fit a little looser or they fit a little tighter. These can be pretty significant rules to determine if we're losing body fat. But I like the idea of measurements just because we're going to have some accountability to a few key areas, the waist, sometimes the thigh, sometimes the chest, right? These areas can tell us if we're losing body fat. However, there's a third one that for me was probably the one that gave me the most information, and that was pictures. 
if you can just get your iPhone, set the timer, buy yourself a $10, $15, $20 tripod, put your phone in it, same lighting each week. Pictures tell the biggest story, okay? Because in a picture, you're getting a lot of information that shows you, okay, I can see from week to week, there are some new details, there are some new shapes. Those three pieces of data really tell us if we're in a fat loss phase. So in your situation where you know how many calories you're taking in, you know how active you are, but you know for a fact that body fat is not changing, are you checking weights? Are you checking measurements? Are you checking pictures? If not, there's potential something could be else be going on. You could be recomping, adding muscle, right? You didn't tell me if you've been getting stronger. You didn't tell me if your clothes are fitting better. So I don't know. I'm going to assume none of that's happening. And thus, you're simply miscalculating your maintenance, okay? You are at maintenance if this is all true. Meaning, those macros you gave me, that is your maintenance. That cardio you gave me, that is your maintenance. What would I do in this situation? For someone getting 13,000 steps and they're got their macros here. I would make an adjustment. Now those 13,000 steps probably are just walking outside, leisurely strolls, right? I'm guessing. I would potentially say, let's focus on making those walks a little more intense. You could add something like a weighted vest, or you could take those walks inside, put it on a treadmill. You could do some jogging to burn more calories during that same amount of time, finding ways to do this. You could also reduce some calories. I wouldn't adjust your protein, but you might want to drop your carbs by 30 or 40 grams, drop your fats by five or 10 grams. Through these combination of things, you're now going to be a few hundred calories in the hole each day, and you might start noticing some progress happening. Again, technology is great. Data is wonderful, but you can't trust that you're in a deficit because a deficit by definition means you are losing body fat. So all these tools are going to be inaccurate at times. I've noticed this trend. And as a coach, again, I don't use these tools. So I really want to impart upon you guys that taking control, tracking your data, being accountable, it's really the missing step. And if I had to give one piece of advice, it would be don't be afraid of moving more. I really find that movement, especially low intensity movement, is probably the magic bullet when it comes to fat loss, maintaining weight loss, I don't love the idea of restricting calories to the point where we have to get uncomfortable. Now, sometimes I do it, you know, but I'm a competitor. I get, I get shredded like this right now. That requires me to be very accurate with my daily activity, my calories. I probably have to get my calories to a point where, yeah, I'm going to be hungry sometimes, but I have a very specific goal for a very specific timeline. And I actually enjoy that part of it. If you're not looking forward to being hungry, Focus on moving more, and I think you'll find that you can lose a lot of body fat and get to pretty low body fat levels with very little effort when you just make it a part of your day. Okay, hopefully this answers your question. Guys, if you have more questions, go to my Instagram direct message. I really love assisting you guys in this journey, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.